this week I'm going to show you how to make another version of probably one of the most useful items on my work table. So join me and see how easy it is to make a drying rack for your miniature items. This is the one that I've had for years. Actually, my dad helped me make this one, and he's been gone for like 12 or 13 years now. So you can tell I've used, and I've used this tons. Um, it's super simple, but I thought I would go over it on a video. And I'm actually going to change the one I'm going to show you today. It's going to be a little different than this because I kind of need it to hold something besides just really small stuff. Be sure and check the blog post. I'll tell you more about what, how I use this on the blog post. So you need a piece of lumber. Um, this one is a 2x4. This, I believe, is a 2x6. Um, the measurement really isn't important. Yeah, 2x6, because it's about 5.5 inches almost um, by 1.5. They're called... The 1.5 deep means it's a two, it started out as 2 and they planed it down to make it smooth. That's how that works. So you need something about this thick, as long as you need it. I like this size, about six inches is perfect. Uh, this one happens to be seven and a half. This was just a piece of wood that was literally laying out in the barn that I got my oldest son. I told him I'd give him credit. He actually used the saw and sawed it off for me yesterday so I could make the video today. Any piece of scrap lumber. Uh, you could actually... You know, if you've got friends that build stuff, ask them for some lumber. Uh, if there's a construction site, sometimes they'll let you take the little ends of lumber. Um, sometimes you can get them cheap or even free at places like Home Depot. So look around, ask around. You just need a little chunk. You don't want it too big because it's too hard to handle then, and for some of the uses, we wouldn't be able to use it. So I'm going to start out by marking this. So i got my ruler. And I'm going to draw a bunch of lines. Now, they don't have to be perfectly straight, okay? I mean, no lie. It's fine. This is just a guide, okay? It's not a big deal. I'm putting my lines about a half inch apart. If you've got a smaller piece of wood, you might want to put them a little closer. Don't go any closer than about a quarter inch, though, because that would be too close. When I get this all marked this way, I'll go see how big my dad put them apart on the other one. And I'm going really crooked now. That's fine. It doesn't matter. And I'm not going to go any closer than that. And my dad made these... Oh, he did them a half inch also. Now, we are going to go in. I'm going to go in about an inch from the ends. I like to have a little extra from the end. Now, I've got lines... I missed one there. I need another line there. That ah, doesn't matter. I don't need that many holes. We're going to go about a half inch. And we're just, well, we'll just do every one because I've got them far enough apart. It's fine. We're going to go across. And all we're doing is we're setting up a grid. If you want to put them closer together, you'll probably want to drill every other hole and alternate them. I'll show you on the other one. We're just drawing lines. These don't have to be particularly straight. Nobody's going to look at it. Alright, now we've got a grid. Everywhere those lines intersect, we're going to drill a hole. Now when my dad did it, he offset them somewhat. Some. They're kind of random. But you see there. But we're going to put them farther apart so they'll be fine. Now for this, we need a drill. I've got my drill. I'm going to do half of the holes, probably this half of the board, I'm going to do with this drill. And let's see if I can do it on camera, a couple of them, but then I'm going to go off camera and finish up. And I may have to get the other drill because I think my battery's dying. 
Yeah, my battery just died. So I'll have to go change drills and we're going to drill a hole. I'll come back when I have holes in those. All right, so I've got holes drilled in this part of it. And I think I forgot to mention what size drill bit this is. This is a 564th. You want something that, uh, oh, that's something as large as a toothpick would be able to fit into because that's what these small holes are for. That and wires, which I'll show you on another video. Now, the remaining spots, we're going to drill with this drill bit. And this is a 3 16th. And I'm going to use this drill bit and drill the rest of the holes. And then I'll right. be back. So I decided to end, I end up doing um, two hole, the two outside ones in the center one, then two outside and center. Because when I started to drill all, um, all of them that I had marked, they were just too close together. So that's it. That's really all there is to this. I only drilled down probably three-fourths of an inch to an inch on each hole. You don't need them really deep. Um, but this is nice. Th this side is like my old one. And you can put things on toothpicks to dry. Or if you're making flowers, which I am going to show you a uh, flower in a few weeks. That's one of the reasons I wanted to make sure that I showed you how to do this first. We'll put the stems in there, and then we can actually bake clay on wire stems right in this wooden block. This side I sized so that I could put golf tees in it. And I'm going to try to get my article on uh, golf tees and some of the uses for them up on Tools of the Trade Tuesday this week. I hope I get the article written in time. I'm going to try. If not this week, then it'll be the following week. But those make a nice fit there, and that, well, you'll have to read the blog post on Tuesday to see what I use those for. So that's all there is to making this really useful tool that will, I mean, it'll hang around for years. This one has always been on my work table. Whether I show it or not, it sits on the edge of my table all the time. This one can too now. So I hope you can find this useful. Um, be sure and check out the Facebook page. Uh, be sure to read the blog post because there's always something extra on the blog, whether it's background on the project, uh, a little reminiscing about the project, or maybe a funny story about something that happened while making it, or something. There's always something more or more details, and I'll give the drill bit sizes in there too in the blog post. So check out the blog, check out the Facebook page, and come back next time for another video. I'll talk to you later. Bye.